What's up, WellTube family? My name is Shannon, at that tile chick on Instagram and YouTube. I am here at South Coast Welding Academy, home of WellTube. I am going to show you today how to solder some copper pipe. I'm a residential tile contractor here in Houston, Texas, originally from New Jersey. Shout out to my New Jersey fam. Um, I'm here at South Coast Welding Academy, and today we are going to walk you through how to solder some copper pipe. So I just wanted to forewarn you guys, because usually in my jobs, I am working in the bathroom. Sometimes we come across plumbing issues or things we might have to fix. It's just the nature of the beast. However, depending on where you are and what you're doing, if you're a homeowner or a contractor, you might want to check with your local state licensing board to you know, follow up with any restrictions that might impose on you. Um, so just a quick overview, we will be going over the tools you will need. And uh, here we have a mock-up of what copper pipe might look like in your studs at home or on a job site. You usually have limited space with drywall backing here. You know, we are able to have a lot of free rain, but usually it's limited. So the standard pipes you'll see are three quarter and half inch. So I'll demonstrate that on both. I'll walk you guys through from cleaning, cutting. Uh, so you'll have nice prep. And then I will be soldering some joints together. Additionally, if you do not, if you're in a pinch and you do not have a vise handy, I'm going to show you how to cut some tubing with just a uh, pipe wrench. All right, guys, so we are over here with the three quarter uh, copper pipe. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna prep the pipe. I'm going to start with cleaning it um, by just scoring the outside lightly with this scotch scrubbing pad, very easy to find. And you just cup it in your hand and twist it on the tube or pipe, whatever you prefer to call it, so that you can see the difference between dirty and clean. Next thing you wanna do is take a rimming tool and just clean off the sharp edge of the inside of the pipe after it's been cut. So after a couple passes, you should be good. You can see, you'll see once the sharp edge starts to cut down and it'll be nice and smooth on the inside. So you take your fitting, whatever it is, there's all different kinds. There's a 90, this is a T-fitting, a coupling, depending on what you are doing. What I'm working with here is clean pipe. So if you had some pipe laying around in your shop or in the back of your truck somewhere in your garage, you might want to give it a little bit more of a heavy duty cleaning. Like I said, these are just some scotch pads. They're cleaning pads that you can buy basically anywhere, but they also have sandpaper specifically for cleaning the copper pipes. This one's a little bit more abrasive. So same, same theory when you're using them. You just wanna go in circles and give it a nice clean. Depending on if your pipe is new or older, you know, you can see the difference. So you definitely wanna make sure that you see some nice, bright, shiny, clean pipe. If you have some old fittings, same thing. You're going to want to use a, a wire pipe cleaner and you want to get in there and clean the inside of the fitting real well. Make sure you get it nice and shiny. Same theory. All right guys, so now once you're done prepping the pipe and you have, you have the male and the female part cleaned, you're ready to apply your flux. So you want to get a good even coat. You don't apply too much, you don't apply too little. So you just get some on your brush. Just go around, nice and even. I need a little bit more. That's it. And then I like to just put a little bit on the inside, just in case. When you're pushing the fitting onto the pipe, it's going to scrape some off and push it back. So you just want to make sure you have enough. 
So now you just fit it on. And now you notice this is, this is quite loose. Um, so you can just take some, some channel locks and you just want to crimp it, make it a little bit tighter so it's not flopping around. Just give it a nice squeeze and now it's a little bit more snug. Now you'll see a bunch of flux squeezed out there with the joint. You want to just wipe it away with a dry rag so you have it nice and clean. The goal here is to make sure the flux is on the inside, not so much on the outside, because that is what's going to attract the material to give you a nice, even solder. So now you're all ready to solder. I'm gonna go put on my gear and we'll get started. All right, I'm all geared up. I just wanted to touch on the fact that there are different torches that you can use. This is map gas, but you can use a torch that goes directly onto the can, or you can use one that goes on a belt like this. The difference is this one has an adjustable nozzle here that you can control the heat and the flame. This one is just one speed. It's just high. That's it. So it just all depends on what your preference is. I like this because not only can I control the flame, I can also this is a little bit easier to get into super tight spots. Whereas if I had to hold the tank, you're a little bit limited on what you're able to do. Additionally, definitely grab yourself a pair of gloves in case you accidentally touch the pipe. It is super hot and you do not want to get burnt. All right, so now that we're prepped and we're clean, we have our flux, we got our gloves, we got our gas, we're good to go. I am going to solder this first joint. So to actually solder, you're going to need some silver solder, lead free. Cool idea is to just cut some pieces beforehand. You can just use any cutters. This is what I had, so this is what I used. I cut myself some pieces to prep. Um, this way when I'm going through, I don't actually have to hold the roll, you know, you can move a little bit more with this and then you could just bend it at a length that you feel comfortable. A lot of people like to bend it the same length as the tube that they're soldering, but that doesn't always work for me. So I just bend it at whatever length I like. So I like to, of course it would just be whatever is comfortable for you. Now this is just about personal technique and preference, but I like to fish it through my fingers here because it gives me a little bit more control when soldering, you know, when you have the flame going, and you'll see here in just a second that you only have minimal time to get your full coverage. So you just want to be able to tap where you need it, tap where you need it, and have nice coverage and control. So I bend it like this and just hold it through my fingers. Personal preference, it doesn't need to be straight all the time, but if that's how you like it, you can do it that way. That's it. As you can see, I didn't need to drag the silver all the way around the joint because the flux applied with heat causes capillary action. Once this gets hot enough, starts to melt, then it will suck in towards where you applied the flux, giving you 100% coverage. So with your wet rag that I mentioned earlier, you can then just clean the joint. Again, make sure you have your gloves on because it gets very hot. You just want to clean it of any excess debris or metal. Nice and clean. You can then go back and inspect. If there's a wall here and you can't see the other side, you can just use one of these little mirrors and just stick that back there 
and check and make sure that you have silver around the whole joint so that you are 100%, you have your 100% coverage. All right, so now I'm going to add an extension that could be going on to a different part of the house. Um, so we got our copper tubing, copper pipe, whatever you prefer to call it. And I will show you how to cut it just using a pipe wrench. You'll also need one of these cutters. Um, this one I'm going to use because I like it, but this one will work in the application where you're between studs and you don't have a lot of space. I have the space, so I'll use this one. So basically, you're just going to open up the pipe wrench that's going to just fit the pipe, but enough where you can twist it towards you and it gets caught. So it's, it's in there. You can use a table or the floor, wherever you are for leverage. And you wanna make sure that it's nice and sturdy. Then after you've measured the section that you're going to need, You apply the cutter. Now, you don't, wanna, you don't wanna clamp down too hard. If you clamp down too hard with the cutter, it's going to bend the copper pipe. Copper is a soft material and it can bend fairly easily. Instead, what you wanna do, now since we crimped, we torqued this in here in the pipe wrench towards us, I wanna spin the cutter towards me as well. And with every turn, I'm going to tighten it just a little bit so as as the the wheel is creating a cut in the pipe it gets a little bit tighter without bending so i'll show you what i mean so we're going to tighten it enough hold the hold the pipe wrench and the pipe still turn towards me and then you see it created a a cut already it's just a surface cut so now I'm going to tighten it a little bit more a little bit more like a quarter turn is all you're gonna need a little bit more a little bit more and you get a nice smooth cut. Okay, that's the piece I need. <laughs> uh. All right. So your fresh cut is going to have a sharp edge on the inside. So like we did before, you wanna take your rimming tool or deburrer and you wanna Hold the new piece of pipe nice and tight and flush with the rimming tool. And you just wanna go along the inside and you wanna apply enough pressure that you can still glide, but not create a crease in the copper. Again, it's a soft material. So if you do that, you're gonna have like a road bump and you won't be able to get a nice clean rim. And so you'll see, you'll know you're doing it right when you're getting nice clean shavings coming off. It doesn't have to be fast. You just want to get that sharp edge off of there. And that's it. Should be good. Next thing you want to do is clean the, clean the male side of the pipe that's going to be soldered to your fitting. And you can see, dirty, clean. Now, we would have already cleaned our fitting before we put it on the existing tubing that is in the wall. So you could, you could check it. We have a nice fit. So now you're going to apply the flux. 
And general rule of thumb is to apply the flux to the male part of the pipe. It's just hard to get a good, um, a good layer of flux on the inside of the pipe. I still put a little bit, but you want to apply your good layer to the male part. Just a nice sweep. And then I just do whatever's left over on the brush, a little extra on the inside. Fit it in. And now it's a little bit loose because now the flux is in there. So I want to make sure that my pipe is leak proof. So I want to make it nice and tight using my channel locks. Give it a nice squeeze. Much better. It should barely turn. You should have to really squeeze it and turn it. So now with your dry rag, you want to clean off the excess flux. Before soldering, you definitely want to stay away from wetting the pipe because it will, it will ruin your, your coverage here. So now we're ready to solder. I got my piece of silver. clean off the joint immediately. And there you have it. So I just want to mention guys that I spent some time here at South Coast Welding Academy and Weld Tube with Tony. He was kind enough to teach me, walk me through all the steps and pass on some of his skill that he's taken many years to acquire um, and with my technical knowledge and background I was able to apply it and learn this fairly easily so I have no doubt you guys will be able to do the same so this right here is three-quarter pipe a lot of people who do this know that this is maybe a little bit more of a tough um, area to solder with a bigger pipe because it takes a little bit longer to heat up um, but you'll notice that I took my time. I noticed when the pipe started to get a little bit of black or when you see that there's smoke coming out that it's definitely time to go. So I didn't have to tap a million times. I just knew that that was the time. We're going to demonstrate on the half inch pipe. It's a lot quicker process. You just gotta go, go, go. It's very fast and heats up very quickly. So I'll show you that now. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate with my heat turned all the way up. It's been all the way up. Um, I just, I get, I get better um, coverage with a higher heat and faster speed versus going slow. So it would really just be advantageous for you to figure out what works better for you and how you like to work. So now, like I said, Half inch, it's going to be super quick. Um, it heats up very fast, so you'll just need, all it will take is just maybe one tap. And from capillary action, it should suck it in and all the way around very quickly.
just to demonstrate if there was a wall here and I couldn't see that other side, I can just look and I can see my silver. So I'm confident that it's 100% leak proof. All right, guys, so that wraps up the tutorial to solder copper pipe. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please stay tuned because I will be coming back to the South Coast Welding Academy and uh, WeldTube will be recording me learning how to weld. If you enjoyed this, I'm sure that that will be a doozy. So please like, comment, share, subscribe, all those really awesome things. Drop some comments, drop lots of love for these guys. Um, and guys, if you think that I'm super awesome and you wanna follow me on social media, please check out my Instagram, at that tile chick, and my YouTube and Facebook page, at that tile chick as well. Have an awesome day.